Hello, I am Dustin Goes to Hollywood. I'm Mally Moore. And you're listening to the Silver Linings Playlist Podcast, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's most bleak endings. It's a struggle every week to get through that. It is. I don't know why. How I you wrote doing, it. How you doing today, Dustin? I'm good. Good? Yeah. I'm glad to hear it. Love this movie. So glad we're doing it. So yeah, this this was a different one for me. This we we mm-hmm. this is the first time we've done a movie that I was not familiar with. I, I, first first reaction. How do you like this movie? Or Holy if you don't, fuck! It's good, huh? It is good, but it is. <laughs> this is the kind a of movie rough ride. This is the kind of movie I would write. Hundred percent. Damn. Yeah, I love this movie. For those of you who don't know, uh, this is a podcast. Where we try to find uh, a, a, the what's good, what is good for these characters at the end of this movie, uh, in some in movies that have bad endings or sad endings or downer endings, we try to find what's the little light in the, at the end of the tunnel for and this it movie. It is it is difficult at times. Yeah, it's pretty. Di- Last week you had a pretty rough time coming up with something good. Shockingly, yeah. yeah. Uh, this week, uh, based on the title, this is episode five entitled "Dog Pound." Uh, now, if you're not familiar with this movie, this movie was available on Netflix for a while. I don't think it's still on there now. I don't think it is anymore. Uh, the year is 2010. The director is Kim Chaperon or Chaperon. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Uh, that is actually a male. Kim. That is a a, oh. a male name. Yeah, Kim. Uh, it's starring uh, some some indie actors. Some of them you might actually know from other things, but it's starring Adam Butcher, Shane Kippel. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce this guy's name. I'm sorry. Mateo, Mateo Morales. Is it Mateo? That's what I thought. Morales. Lawrence Bain and Trent McMullen. Um, I, I know th- none of them. I, I, rec- I recognize no one in I this movie. I think Shane Kippel was on like Degrassi or something like that. One of those Canadian oh. shows. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, couldn't, oh. I couldn't find any info on the budget or how much this movie grossed. I'm assuming it just had like a like a festival circuit. So it didn't really have like a... Yeah, probably. You know, so I couldn't find anything. Surprisingly, this movie only has a 65% on Rotten Tomatoes. 5% less than Terminator 3 did. What the hell? Yeah. I, you know, that could be as like fewer people voting. Probably. Yeah, probably and when you first, when you it. first suggested this, I had no idea what you were talking about. Yeah. I had never heard of this movie. Uh, it won best narrative director, uh, and was nominated for best narrative feature at Tribeca. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, if you're not familiar with the movie, let's go ahead and listen to the trailer. Uh, it, I will say that well, you know we'll talk about it afterwards. We'll talk about okay, it. Okay, okay. Let's just listen to the trailer. Wait, should we let's let's give a spoiler warning. Uh-huh. It's a bit of a lengthy trailer. Yeah. And there are parts they probably shouldn't show in the yes. trailer. Yes. So but let's just lead with that yeah, and then we'll just, talk about it. Let's listen to it and we'll talk about it afterwards. out of your civilian clothes and place all of your belongings in the box with your name on it. All of your belongings. Shake your hair, wiggle your fingers, spread your toes, blow your nose. Welcome to Enola Vale Youth Correctional Facility. Butch, bed on the far left. Davis, straight ahead. Angel, right here. Judge may have given you a sentence, but in reality, your sentence all depends on your behavior. No weapons. No illegal substance. No tobacco. No alcohol. And no signs of gang activity will be permitted on the facility of Enola Vale. Right now, you're all level one. Evaluations will determine for us whether you actually want to change and rehabilitate. Slipped and fell. If you refuse to cooperate, I have no choice but to isolate you. So let's go, you and me. Come on, throw down. Goodyear, what the hell happened?
So I want to say up front, I think this is a very misleading trailer, at at least at first. Yeah, no, the first half of this trailer does not, does not what the movie is about. give you the tone <laughs> of this movie at all. And it's kind of a slow build. Like This trailer is only like, what, two minutes, a little over two minutes, and it feels long. See, but maybe I don't like tra- I don't. Two minutes is too long for a trailer for I me. Agree. I like that sweet minute, minute and a half. I think it's also kind of like, like has to do with the subject too. It's supposed to make you feel like you're in prison because yeah. this thing is long. Um, do you want to talk about anything else before we get into the actual film and try to find the silver lining at the end? Nah, let's jump into it. All I'm right, ready. My first note, and this is gross, but I put wet lips. <laughs> <laughs> We start off this movie introducing uh, kind of backstories, I guess, on our I three guess. leads. Uh, Davis, uh, Angel, and Butch. And we start off with Davis, who is... We start off, he's making out with this girl, and he's obviously a womanizer just by... Mm-hmm. You know, he calls this girl a bitch, whatever. Uh, and he's pumping drugs into himself, into her. And he goes down on her, and... Oh, un- yeah. we, we are one... Literally, I because I checked, one minute into this movie... Somebody's getting, somebody's getting eaten out real quick. Um, but the, the part the reason I wrote down wet lips, I don't know why they felt the need to do this, but he's going out on this girl and I guess his mom or somebody knocks on the door or whatever. And he like lifts his head up. And it's so, I'm, I don't mean to be gross guys, but it's so, it's so apparent. He's just, got, oh, yeah. his face is all wet. It's disgusting. Oh, yeah. It's they went, flat out they, disgusting. they went for it on that one. They went for it. Oh, they so went for gross. it. It's so gross. Um, then we get introduced to Angel, uh, who is uh, basically trying to do this scam uh, where he stands on the side of the road. Uh, as a car drives by, he throws a bat under the wheel that breaks and imitates like the feeling of running over someone. And he pretends basically to get run over. Mm-hmm. And that way, when the person gets out of the car to come check on him, his friend steals her car like a Grand Theft Auto thing. Uh, in this case, he ends up having to stab uh, the driver of the car, who realizes it's a scam. And, yep. Yeah. Then we're introduced to Butch, who's already in like a juvenile hall or a correctional, you know, facility. Uh, and he's being abused by this guard, who's I guess caught him making some kind of uh, I don't know what you call it, but basically like a, an illegal alcoholic beverage mm-hmm. or a, an attempt at something like that. Um. And he's abusing the shit out of Butch. He's just hitting him and hitting him. And Butch is my my first note on Butch is literally Butch equals badass. Like, oh, this dude is a yeah. to- he's only I think seventeen in the movie. This oh yeah, they're all, all three of them are young, like sixteen, fifteen. I mean, 17. obviously they're going to juvenile. Yeah, centers, but, but he is a total fucking badass. So he's getting hit, and every time he's getting slapped in the face, he see he's playing the same thing. He's like, "Don't hit me again, mm-hmm. slap. Don't hit me again," and he just keeps building and building. And I. I don't know if this is exaggerated just because of the situation, but just ex- this kind of excess brutality or like punishment kind of thing. Like, oh, and it's present throughout the entire. The only it does not let down. There is constantly guards beating people, and you know, inmates beating other inmates. Just I don't know. Yeah, um, like if you make it this far into the movie, in what we're maybe three minutes. Five, yeah, three, three to, to five, five minutes. minutes into the movie. If it's already too much for you. Turn it off. Turn it off. It does Because it better. only escalates. Um, and yeah, so Butch ends up gouging this uh, guy's eye out. And it's so crazy. It's not like... You, with most movies, if somebody's getting their eyes gouged out, you just see thumbs getting shoved in the eyes. Not Butch. Not here. He is straight hooking with his fingers and pulling he's this got, guy's like, eye out. He's got it. Like, he has a technique. Mm-hmm. He's done this before. He has done this before. He has gouged someone's eye out. Uh, and then this is where uh, we're introduced to uh, Enola Vale, this this uh, juvenile hall correction, whatever you want to call it. We'll just call it, for the sake of the, the discussion, we'll call it jail. Yeah. In this jail, uh, Butch, Angel, and Davis are, you know, being introduced by one of the head correctional officers. You know, they're having their examination. They're stripped down naked, all this kind of thing. And one of the guards comes in, Goodyear. Goodyear is kind of like the guy that's, Kind of watches over these kids yeah. and make sure that everything's going okay. But he's still a guard at the end of the day. Right. He still, you know, has, lays down the law. Uh, he, he kind of runs, goes over this overview of of what to expect in this jail, and he mentions this kind of hierarchy of levels. Where level one, you're in this orange jumpsuit, uh, you fucked up, you know, you're or you're brand new. 
Uh, these, I think, I want to say Butch Davis and Angel start off at level two. I think you automatically start off at level two where you're just basically like a blue polo sweat or mm-hmm. not a blue sweater, yeah, blue yeah. sweatpants, more casual, you know, level one is obviously the orange jumpsuit that we all see fucking inmates in and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's, I don't, I guess level three is the next one, but here's the thing I wrote down. They're saying level three, you get like this black polo, you're treated better, you get more opportunities, but it's funny because it's like, is black is a black polo a selling point of achievement? Like, d- man, if you behave, you get a sweet black polo. Hey, I mean, if it's <laughs> if the choice is between orange jumpsuit, bluish gray sweater, or sweater. black polo, I feel like sweater and sweatpants. That's way more comfortable than a black polo and jeans. Yeah, but you look good, son. I mean, they have the lazy collar polos too. Like, they're not that sharp. And you got you got to know you these have wrong, been like used for years and just washed and given over to new inmates and huh? you're assuming I am assuming they um, might get a fresh polo. That's a good point. We don't know that. So here's the thing, yeah, this movie just is kind of setting you up. Okay, here's your characters, here's the jail they're at, here's kind of the overview. It's all kind of exposition, but it's not like do you want to do would you say it's beating you over the head with exposition or like setup or is it more kind of I guess it makes sense in the grand scheme of things because he's explaining it. To yeah, him. no, I mean I think it it works for it's me. It's warranted. Yeah, it's not no, just somebody just talking just for the sake right, of talking. Right, no, exactly. Like it works completely within the context of the film. So Butch is kind of a loner. He goes to this line, the lunch line, uh, and he's getting I guess kind of like a chili. He's getting chili, and you know in jails inmates will work in the kitchen, so it's inmates serving other inmates. Mm-hmm. This is where he gets introduced to Banks. Uh, he's kind of like the bully, the big brawn yeah. in the jail, um, and he spills. Uh, I you know he spills a. Uh, chili on butch's hand and it's like scolding hot and he's clear, clearly he's intimidating i'm trying to like piss him off my first note when i when i see banks is i the first thing i think is turtle bitch tits um <laughs> nothing no disrespect to this actor but you're, you're meant to hate this character and he's Yo, yeah, got completely. like this kind of turtle face to me <laughs> and not only that he's kind of a heftier guy yeah. So he's got, you know, the man tits. Nothing to be ashamed of. But that's the first thing I think of. I think turtle bitch tits is when I when I watch this movie. And that's what I call on throughout the movie. Uh, and that's what I'm going to refer to him, too, as the whole thing. <laughs> Noted. So, so Butch gets his, his, his lunch and goes and sits down next to this kid, Max. And Max is in an orange jumpsuit. And yeah, Max is. is very odd. Yeah. Uh, he makes a comment he's saying... He's a strange one. Yeah, yeah, he makes a comment saying, you know, don't worry about banks. Let, you know, they'll leave you alone eventually. And he's like, they, they, you know, they were picking on me, but they left me alone. And it's also because I have AIDS. Yeah, he just drops just that. Very casual. Just, just like, yeah. Yeah, I got AIDS. Don't worry about it. No thing. Don't worry about it. Uh, and Butch is a little taken back by it. More so, I think, just kind of like, why are you telling me this? More than, holy shit, you have AIDS? Is yeah. the thing? Like, why, why is this? Why do I need to know that information? Here's the thing about these kids, right? So they're all probably age, what do you want to say, 14, 17, probably. Yeah, in that age range, yeah. I mean, they're all under eighteen, clearly. Um, they all act way above their age. I feel like their direction is you're in prison, like you are a grown ass man in prison, act like it, kind of thing. Pretty much, they're all on their guard, and I, I don't know. I've never been to juvie, so I don't really know. Me neither. The mind, the mentality there. Do you act like it's prison, or? I mean, probably. I would think the kid, the guys, are like, hey man, it, we're just chilling until we get out. I couldn't imagine it's like. You're already in that fucking prison. But then again, most people that go to juvie, I assume, are... Well, and I feel like this particular place is, like... The worst of the worst? Yeah, it's like it's the worst of the worst, exactly. It's like uh, Alcatraz, but for for juvie? (laughs) Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's a thing that exists, but it does in this movie. We cut to this bathroom where Davis and Angel are brushing their teeth, getting ready for the day. And Davis has a Virgin Mary tattoo... Which, first of all, again, he's got to be 16, I think. I think that when they introduce him, they say he's 16. Something like that, yeah. Already got a tattoo? Cool, man. But not he's only that. He's cooler than me. Not only that, he's got a Virgin Mary tattoo, and he says, uh, this is for all the virgins I've corrupted, which I mean, you're, you're supposed to kind of like this character, I guess. But he makes it really hard at first. Yeah. And maybe that's he's the, got some flaws. That's maybe that's damn the sure. draw in. They're like, well, he's scummy, but. Yeah. As the movie progresses, you kind of start to like him a little more. Um, this is great. We get introduced to this character, Frank. Well, we get introduced <laughs> him a little before this, but this is the, the fun part. Uh, Frank comes in, and he's brushing his teeth, and he notices that 
some way, well, you don't really notice what he notices, but the camera yeah. kind of pans, and we see there's this large, large kid basically just sitting on the toilet taking a shit. And Frank comes in to brush his teeth, and he is immediately disgusted. Oh, uh, what is his, what does he say? He to says, him? you know, flush it, something. He basically gives it to him, hey, man, how about a courtesy flush? Yeah. And the guy. His actual line yeah. made me laugh. The fat so guy hard, is like, fuck you, was. basically. Frank turns and throws his toothpaste tube at this kid. And the guy's like, what the fuck? And Frank literally just says, throw me back my toothpaste. <laughs> I laugh every fucking time I see that Oh, scene. yeah. That whole interaction is just it's so, so great. goddamn funny. It's so funny. I love Frank. Uh, my next note is Davis is a bitch. Uh, because Davis <laughs> well. is hanging out in his bunk room and banks with his two goons. Uh, Looney, and I don't remember who the other one's name is, but basically, like I said last uh, week, for future reference, I will be referring to them as Crab and Goyle. I'm going to refer to them as Randall One and Randall Two because they both look like that Randall works from as Recess. Well. Banks walks in with Randall Squad, and <laughs> he's he's just toy. He's just Randall fucking. Deuces. Yeah, he's he's fucking with them. Like they're they're all three fucking with Davis. And basically, what happens is uh, we find out that Davis is only in juvie for three months. That's it. Uh, and he asked Banks. What did? Huh? Wait, what did Davis end up going in there for? I th- want to say it was for the selling for the drugs. Okay, okay. Maybe not selling drugs, but for just possession or something. Um, but yeah, he asked Banks, "How long are you in here for?" And Banks is just fucking with him and pretends to take offense to it. Mm-hmm. It's just really fucking shitty, like how kids act, and you know the kids like to act like that in high school all the fucking time. Yeah. Um, he notices that Davis has on these sweet Timberlands. And, you know, basically talks his way and bullies his way into taking them from him. Which, again, conveniency in movies. This is a reoccurring thing. It just happens they have to be the same shoe size. Um, See, that's what I love. I was just talking to someone about this yesterday. That's why I love that one scene in Die Hard. Where... He John, loses his shoes? John, oh, yeah, he loses his shoes <laughs> at the beginning. No, he kills... Like, John McClane kills one of the henchmen. Tries to take his shoes and they're the wrong size. Yeah. That is why I love Die Hard. Yeah. Uh, so from this, we cut to back to another lunch scene. There's a lot of lunch scenes in this movie. Yeah, there um, are. I got so I literally paused this movie halfway through, went and got food because I was getting so hungry oh, watching yeah. it. I was, I was, you know, having having some meals too. Eventually, got very sick to my stomach watching it. Yeah, but we'll get to that later. Uh, so we introduced this other character, Shadow, who is I don't think he says anything the whole movie. Uh, and that's just a badass name. Yeah, he's this lumbering, lumbering uh, a black inmate, and basically what's happening is there's a some kind of I I don't understand this. There's drug deals apparently going on in this juvenile. Is, again, is juvie really this? Again, dude, they they are the hardest of the hardest. But they're kids. They're fucking seventeen and sixteen, and they're doing fucking like pill you deals. You don't know seventeen year old drug dealers? Yes, I, I get a good point. What kind I mean, of town did you grow up in? Because that was not like, that. that. No, that's. I mean, not around. Not, but the whole thing is there. The the whole mentality of this movie is it acts like this is not juvenile. This is fucking you know high security maximum prison like they're dude i said they are you just chalk it up to they are the I hardest guess, of the hardest i, I would I, if i was 17 in juvenile hall i would just be thinking you know what i'm just gonna do my time and get the fuck out this isn't a ripple in my fucking existence if i'm here for four months whatever i'll just do my time and get the fuck out but yeah. i don't know you're not hard uh <laughs> I don't even remember. Yeah, that's true. I don't. I don't remember what the context of this was, but I just wrote down snitching and put thoughts. Oh, I remember. Uh, Butch gets uh, beat the fuck up in the middle of the night oh, by Banks and, yeah, and, right. and the Randall Squad. Uh, and in the morning, Goodyear ask um, weirdest assault. Yeah, too. it's it's very reminiscent of like a Full Metal Jacket, but without the yeah yeah. Um, in the morning, Goodyear asks him who did this, and Banks, uh, Banks, uh, Butch tells him I, I tripped and fell in the dark, yeah, and you know won't snitch. So what do you think? Do you you do you snitch on this guy? Because I don't no, know. I think the repercussions. I think that's what he's worried about is the repercussions. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. What they they put Banks and his squad remember, in the hole. Remember the classic phrase: "Bitches get get." Stitches. stitches yeah but enough said what happens they they put him in the hole for a couple of days and he comes back and does it again is that really i don't know anyways 
Um, I don't know what the purpose of this scene is. Maybe you can explain it to me. But we cut to Max uh, meeting with, like, I guess she's like a guidance counselor, Miss Biggs. Mm-hmm. Uh, he walks to her room and she's uh, clearly annoyed by him. I guess he tries to do something like this all the time, but he goes in and she asks, what do you want? If you hear about your HIV test results, you can stop spreading the rumor that you have AIDS because it's negative. <laughs> so for some reason, we, I don't know what this character purpose is. Maybe that's his reason to not be bullied is he tells people he has AIDS. Yeah. Pretty smart. Um, it's not, I mean, it's not the worst strategy I've bad, ever heard but- of. This, he has this poem that he says to Miss Biggs, and basically it's just a workaround to him making a joke of how he wants to get with her, basically. Yeah. What is the purpose of this scene? Because Max is in... I, he's not really that intricate to the plot. Again, the, I've, all, I've literally only seen this movie once, and it was about two hours ago. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what the point of this was. Okay. It's maybe just the comedic relief, but still, there's no, no reason this scene needs to exist. It's not terribly funny. It's just kind of awkward. Yeah, it's it's really funny, especially the, like his attitude in the whole thing. Like she's clearly visibly upset, but he's upset that she's upset. Yeah, it's really weird, but it's still it's funny. It's so strange. It's so it's still funny. Uh, I, but I, I but, think it's just to get you away from like the brutality the shit for a bit. <laughs> uh, my next note says Sal is the realist, and if you don't know who Sal is, Sal is literally. I think he might be like eleven. <laughs> he's the shortest yeah, inmate. Yeah, he is not. He is not as old as the rest of them. That's for sure. Um, what happens in this scene is uh, Banks and the the Randall squad try to fake make amends with Davis and be like, mm-hmm. you know, you didn't snitch on us for taking your shoes. You're cool. Uh, I know you're in here for drugs. Do you want to take some of this coke, basically? And my question is, why would you take drugs from someone that you know hates you, even if they're pretending to be nice to you? They he they literally stole your shit day yeah, one. Yeah, that was dumb on his part. Dumb's an understatement. That's like really that's stupid. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. <laughs> Davis takes this this drug that Banks offers him, thinking that it's coke, and I don't know what it's supposed to be, but basically he has a bad reaction to it. It's like. A bad trip, you know, he gets sick. Um, I say it either wasn't like it wasn't actually coke or they laced it with something, or yeah, it's something, something like bad because they end up like teasing him, mocking him that yeah. while he's tripping, that they're gonna fuck his mom, fuck his sister, all this stuff, draw you know, permanent marker penises all over his face, and all this shit. <laughs> I actually, bad. one of my notes is dick face drawings always funny, always funny. Now, even if the, even the guy's tripping on the verge of death, still funny. Yeah. Uh, my next co- note is worst care ever because I feel like none of these guards give a shit, and maybe that's the mentality you have to have in this place. But you literally see a kid crawling on his like can't even sit up, crawling on his stomach, covered in all this stuff. Yep. You know, mumbling that he's dying, and they just kind of casually stroll through and through the uh through the hallways. It's- uh the system man this is kind of a, a cool scene that i like it's it's pretty raw but yeah goodyear finds uh davis in the in the hallway picks See, him up goodyear i feel like is I, the good guy kind of See, i don't know i don't want, okay i don't want to say the good guy he's the least shitty out of all the, the guards of, the guards yeah mm, maybe because you get moments of him showing that he kind of like like that for instance yeah the other is just he's, ignoring it's done, the whole it's done thing. with such apathy that it's hard to you're right you're right so Goodyear tries to clean him up takes him gives him a cold shower forces him to puke makes him drink water and basically yeah, puts him in that's that's a rough scene puts him in the solitary and for his protection so he can yeah. like sweat out his fucking whatever right, it is he right. did. Yeah, it is a rough scene because they don't cut away. He sticks he sticks his fingers down Davis' yeah. throat and makes him puke all over himself. So, uh, so Butch is put into solitary solid uh, terror confinement as well because he won't snitch on Banks, and Angel is also thrown into solitary because he is not taking well to being in prison and like refuses to make his bed and all this other stuff. So they're all three thrown into the hole. There's this, like music montage that kind of just shows things happening, and in this montage, Butch is doing something odd, and maybe I guess it's supposed to be you know symbolic of his character or whatever. But he's mm-hmm. he's sitting on this bed, and he's spinning on the floor, and in this and on the floor is this roach, 
and he's basically drowning this roach in his spit. Yeah, that was. I kind of like it, but at the same time, it's like I don't know. <laughs> it's weird, but it's it, 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 it kind of works in the movie, which is yeah weirder. I think any other movie, this would just be like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah, at this point in the movie, I'm just like, whatever happens on screen, I'm just like, all right, sure. All right. <laughs> so Davis, Angel, and Butch are let out of the hole and gone back to doing whatever. Davis is in this rec room watching this Spanish commercial for like this this infomercial for like this cutting knife or yeah, whatever yeah. the fuck it is. Uh and he's just chilling in there watching this thing. But he's like he's had it with this juvie already. He's had it with yeah, jail. He, is he not looks timid. About his life. He's not he's angry, he's timid, and he's just in there. Meanwhile, the the Randall squad are playing ping pong and, you know, start teasing him, hitting him, like smacking the ping ball toward him and everything, calling him faggot. And Davis decides to step up to him. Uh, and in the, that moment, enters Butch. Enters the yep. rec room. And I don't know who it is, but someone basically throws a bag over the security camera so no one can see. But Butch comes in, takes the tennis paddle from, I guess, Lo- I think it's Looney. Uh, something like that, yeah. It's one of the two. I think it is Looney. Takes the, the tennis paddle from him and literally <laughs> smacks this dude in the face. Again, and the, Butch is a badass. The sound is so great. The oh, sound the design. S- oh, my God. When he God. smacks him with the tennis paddle, it's literally like a tennis paddle smacking like a, a ping pong ball. It's yeah. but like hard as fuck. And basically breaks the dude's nose with a tennis paddle. Ask where Butch is. And, uh... His Randall squad is quick to snitch on him. He tells him he's upstairs in the bath. Or yeah, in the bath they or don't. <laughs> they f- they flip on that real quick. Uh, Butch drops the tennis paddle, but takes like a little blue mug, like a plastic mug. Mm-hmm. Uh, takes that with him, and he brings Davis. And they uh, Butch is basically like leading, and Davis is kind of following like a puppy. Mm-hmm. Butch finds Banks in the bathroom and beats the ever loving shit out of yeah, him with this plastic he does. cup. Not only are you being beat, you know, but it's with a plastic. It's not even a, like a porcelain mug, like a coffee mug. It's no, a it's like a plastic. It's a plastic cup. And not only that, but there's no music during this scene. So all we hear is like the sound of the flesh hitting, the sound of the cup. We get the sound of the sneakers kicking on the floor, like scraping the floor. Uh, it's the sound design in this movie is so great. And, you know, we see <laughs> Banks twitching on the floor as he's being beat. It's just a. It's, again, it doesn't get any. No, the, the brutality level in this movie is increases. Insane. It increases as it goes along. And yeah, uh, like and even after even after this scene, like just thinking like, nope, it it gets worse, much worse. Oh my god, I'm getting so stressed out thinking about it. Butch becomes the tough guy. Like he is now the Banks role. Oh like, yeah, we don't, he is. He established himself. I don't know what happens hard. to Banks after this, but Banks is not to be seen ever again. Uh oh shit! You're, yeah, we mm-hmm. don't see him again, do we? So Butch and Angel are hanging out in the in the bunk beds. Where I good, think it's probably assumed he's in solitary somewhere, or I'm like taking to medical care or something, because he is left to That's a bloody true. fucking pole. Yeah, pole. you're right. Uh, Butch and Angel are hanging out in the bunks, trying to play it off uh, as if they had no involvement or whatever. And enters Goodyear, who tells him, you know, I told you not to retaliate, uh, you know, and basically he's just he's intimidating, him. he's provoking him, and that's another thing I wrote down is just a CEO provoking an inmate, like. Does this happen? Did like oh, I mean yeah. I assume this happens in jail, but this again, this is juvie. This is not real Dude, time. Any like, is this legal? <laughs> that's, well, no. That's that's probably the thing. not. Yeah, that's the thing. Is so Goodyear is basically like pushing him, and we get that Bush gets this gleam in his eye, like we saw when we first introduced to him. Uh, Goodyear shoving shoving him up against this bunk bed, and the bed is you know doing that yeah. hard metal scrape on the floor. And Butch is immediately goes from smiles to deadpan, and he's just telling him, "Don't do that again. Shove into the bed. Don't do that again." And you think it's gonna happen. You think Butch is gonna snap. Oh yeah, but he doesn't. He doesn't snap on Goodyear. They flip that one on you. Yep. We get cut to a scene uh, for it's like I guess visitors uh, visitation. Yeah. And Davis's mom enters and tells him that she has filed a suit against the uh, against the, the jail. And Davis freaks out, asking, why the fuck would you do that? And why do you think he flips out here? Why Do you think it's because well, cause I, he's afraid of being a bitch again in front of these kids? Not so much that. I feel like he's afraid that the system, like, he's afraid of, like, the system, like, screwing him over, basically. Like, 
if you know the warden or whatever or the guards find out that his family's suing them they might make a hell on they him. might you know lie or do something that would cause him to like get more time or something like that uh okay i can understand that uh so that's also showing dave is just kind of getting used to this jail life and like yeah. falling even deeper to it um cut to a scene where uh now that Banks has been taken out, Butch uh, is being told that uh, Shadow wants to see him. Uh, that's the drug dealer, uh, the head drug deal dude mm-hmm. in the jail. But they end up going to uh, an anger aggression meeting where Shadow has like this guy, this this white kid that's like his his mule. Like he gets <laughs> the drugs that come in apparently from this older guy at visitation. He takes the drugs, gives them to Shadow. Shadow does whatever with them. So in this meeting are that guy, the mule, uh, Frank, Harold, who is uh, one of Frank's friends, Butch, the fat guy from the bathroom, and uh, this uh, Puerto Rican gentleman. And I, th- I don't think Shadow is in this meeting, is he? Uh, so I don't know why Butch is necessarily there. Anyway. No, I don't think so. It, it doesn't matter. This is the anger and aggression meeting where Miss Biggs tries to talk to them about anger and how to, you know, quantify it. So she says, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, how's your day? Mine was a 6 because I lost, I had road rage, basically. Mm-hmm. And Frank just says, flat out, zero. And uh, Miss Big says, you know, you've been a zero for months now. Is there <laughs> nothing positive uh, that's, that, you can, that you can come up with? And he just gives her a flat out, no. And I love it. I love Frank's no. character. It's so perfect. Um, he's telling it like it is. I ain't mad at him. Mm-hmm. And so Miss Biggs has written on the chalkboard the words anger and aggression, and she asks uh, Harold to read it off. She says, "Can you tell us what today's meeting is?" And he has a little bit of a stuttering problem, or yeah. like just reading in general, having a little trouble. The fat guy makes a comment, you know, kind of like a today junior kind of thing. <laughs> Basically, this meeting turns crazy real quick. Where oh yes, Harold makes a comment to Miss Biggs, kind of flirting with her, and the fat guy. I don't know what else to call him. I just, he's the fat guy. Yeah, it's well, like this movie. Like if something can go wrong, it's gonna go. It's wrong. gonna go wrong in the worst possible way. Yes. Harold makes a comment to Miss Biggs, and then the fat guy kind of <coughs> makes a racist comment, saying, "What would she want with a N word like you?" Mm-hmm. And then not only that, but somehow it turns to to Frank and the Puerto Rican guy now fighting. And Frank is also the realist. Frank and Sal Frank, are the realist. Yeah, Frank does not. Frank and don't play. basically don't everybody play. everybody in this room just starts fighting, but Butch pulls the messenger guy aside and tells him he wants to meet with him after everything happens. Uh it Butch just becomes like this narcotics officer. I don't know what his deal I, here's the thing. Butch is a badass. He's also the anti hero. So for him to do you're things right, like this right. where he's trying to like break up this drug scene is kind of it's like, okay, he wants to do the right thing. But at the same time, he's making his... He's the vigilante, I guess. Like, yeah, he's, he's yeah. Def, definitely doing it the way he wants to do it. Like, he wants to do the right thing, but in, like, the most badass way possible. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we cut to this scene where uh, Davis is trying to masturbate in his bunk bed after lights out. Yeah. And somebody makes a comment saying, you know, fuck off with that, and, or at least tell us what you're thinking about. Right. And apparently Davis has these stories that he likes to tell about when he corrupted virgins or basically his sex escapades. And everybody in the bunk wants to hear his story. So he tells the story. And I gotta say, he is a great fucking storyteller. Oh, not, agreed. Not only is his description great, but we get to see what's happening. So he tells this story about how he's at this girl's house. The girl was on, on her period and he didn't want to have sex with her. So she fell asleep. And he decides he's gonna light up a, light up a joint in her house. And her mom happens to come home early. And this is, of course, never what happened in a million years. Do you think, do you, first of all, do you think this story is true? No. Not at all. That's what I thought. No way. So he's he's claiming that it's he's... It's a great story. Yeah, it's know. a great story. He's claiming that he's smoking weed on this couch. The girl's mom walks in, and she has to take a puff from it. And he's describing her, and you know she's got her tits out. She's got these big red lips, all this stuff. And she makes a cough. The way he tells the story and the, the people's reaction in... Uh, in the bunk that are listening to it is so it's so great you feel like you're in on it like the direction is so great you feel like you're in on this story and you're excited to hear it too uh as he's telling the story everybody in the, in the room is doing the more of the oohs and the mm-hmm. like like cheering them on and everything oh yeah they're they're buying into it hard by the time he ends up like saying that he fucked her the whole fucking bunk 
bedroom, like fucking the barracks fucking erupts with like basically Davis went from being the bitch and now he's the king. Yeah. He is the king of this place. All uh, of just the power of a story, man. It's so gr- he's such a good storyteller. This is one of my favorite scenes in the movie. One oh, of yeah, no, one I really I really like this scene. Uh the next scene we're we're playing dodgeball. Alright, we get introduced. Yeah. I I love this guy. This is basically the coach. And I guess he's also a guard. And he's basically saying, we're going to play dodgeball today. And he tells the two, he tells the whole room, you know, mix up into two teams. See, you, you've questioned all like the guards picking on the inmates and that, and the drug deals. The dodgeball is the thing I question. <laughs> do, are they, do they play dodgeball in juvenile correctional Maybe. facilities? Maybe. I mean, they got to do something recreational. I mean, you would think in you know in real jails it's like basketball court and weights. Yeah, well, I guess maybe juvenile halls. I mean, they're also in Montana, so being outside. I mean, is probably wrong. Not dodgeball is fun as shit. Yeah, but I feel like dodgeball's a, I don't know, uh, maybe a too violent of a. I don't know. Activity it sounds fun though for a bunch of violent kids. <laughs> Anyways, he tells the two the, the the whole room mix up into two rooms and it's instant segregation. It's white kids. Oh yeah, and the black kids and Puerto Rican kids on one team and. He makes a comment, which I love. And it's obviously, you know, here's the movie title in the movie. And he says, you know, you're a bunch, of, you're not gangsters. You're not in words. You're not mobsters. You're a bunch of stray dogs that got locked up in a dog pound. Roll credits. I fucking love that line. It's no, so, like, it's so true. <laughs> it's such a good analogy. Usually I kind of cringe when they the do title it. line comes in. But he's, the way he but delivers that it. that one works so well. The way he delivers it is so good. Stray dogs that got locked up in a dog pound, and I love it. Uh, basically, the two teams mix up, and it comes down to uh, one-on-one with Butch being on one team, and as they call him Sweat Mark, yeah. because he likes to sweat a lot, is Davis. And Davis ends up winning, and he's, again, he's the king. He's on top of everything. He's rocking his shit right now. He's at the top of the world. Butch loves it because Banks is gone. Uh, I believe at this point... Uh, oh, no, it's coming up. I'm sorry. Uh, Banks is gone, and Butch, you know, sees everything right in the world other than mm-hmm. this drug thing. But everybody's happy for the most part. Yeah. There's this intimate scene where Butch, Angel, <clears throat> uh, Sal, and Davis are doing laundry. Oh, and Max are all doing yeah, laundry. Yeah, yeah. And there's it's a playful moment. You know, Butch is like got Angel in a headlock, gives him a little kiss on the head. It's very like brotherly love kind of thing, like rebels combining together. It's, it's like the it's the so dot, fun. It's such like. God. It's so intimate and brotherly, but like it's you feel like, like you're in the gang so with them. It's so happy. It's so for happy for a minute, and you feel like you're in the gang with them. Yeah, that's the cool part. Uh, Butch talks about he wants to join the circus when he gets out of <laughs> out of jail, and it, you of know, course you do. You Butch. can't you can't tell if he's and he's juggling while he's saying this. He's yeah. juggling a pair of socks. You can't tell if he's serious or not. That's the fun part because uh, Goodyear comes down. And or not Goodyear, I'm sorry. Uh, the other, uh, the main CEO. Anyways, I can't remember his name. He takes Butch to to the the warden, and the warden's basically saying, uh, <clears throat> "That officer you blinded, you know, at the very beginning of the movie, mm-hmm. he's like the officer you blinded. Turns out he was abusing inmates. Shocker. Go figure. I mean, we fucking see it happening in real time. Right. Um, and they're basically saying, you know, because of that, you were spe- you were supposed to be released." Uh, you would have been released two weeks from now. Like, if he would have stayed on his original in his original prison in his original sentence, mm-hmm. in two weeks he would have been released. So they're saying, if you act right, then these next two weeks we'll let you out. You know, mm-hmm. uh, he and the, it's funny because the warden asks him, "What do you want to do when you get out of here?" And he says, "I want to join the circus." Yeah, and he's like, "Is that a joke?" And he's like, "Not at all." So I don't I don't know if he's being serious or not, but I don't care. I think it's funny. I think it's no. Charming. I, th- I think he's being completely serious. Like, I think it's charming too. He like, has a talent character. and he wants to do something with it mm-hmm. so we cut to another lunch scene where davis uh like the max, twenty-seven thousand yeah. lunch scene in this <laughs> davis movie. butch i want to say angel and, and max are all having lunch so i think most i think most of the crew's present for yeah. this one and they're talking about uh because max likes to eat his his protein his chicken nuggets last they started comparing it uh he compares eating to making love that you have to be slow or whatever uh, Butch likes to inhale his food and not mm-hmm. even taste it, and it's kind of a, another play, another playful moment that goes back yeah. and forth. Here's where things go bad again. Until Shadow's little messenger kid, uh, because uh, he didn't deliver on his drugs because Butch took him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Harold ends up cutting him because Harold yeah. works for Shadow, cutting him deep, like needing stitches, kind of thing. Yeah, like uh, right, it's right across, like the right across the, the cheek face. and everything. 
Um, dude, and his like scream when it happens awful. is like yeah, rough to listen to. And I had I was watching this earlier, not realizing how loud I had it turned up until that scene, yep. and it terrified me. So <clears throat> Butch decides to get back. He ends up choking out uh, Shadow, uh, and you know, telling him, "Don't ever let it fucking happen again," mm-hmm. and leaves him there with a you know tosses a. A big old bag of pills on him. I guess yep. to basically get caught because I don't think we ever see Shadow again after this either. No, they're dropping like flies at this point. So uh, yeah, at this point everything's all good. Butch is now. I don't. He's not in control of everything because he didn't want control of everything. He just wanted the bad seeds out, pretty much. Uh, Goodyear is uh, tries to remind uh, the head CEO that tomorrow is his daughter's yeah. birthday party, and he requested off, and they're like, absolutely not. We've had beatings. We've well, had. And get like. Like I said, I'm not saying Goodyear's the good guy, but I mean you feel for him. During I feel this like he's scene. he's a good person that has bad shit happen to him, and because of that, yeah. he takes it out on like people. he's trying to make the best of a horrible situation. Mm-hmm. Here's where things uh, get really bad. So Max, uh, Davis, Angel, and Butch are assigned to basically painting a wall, mm-hmm. and Goodyear's on the phone with his wife, who are they're having an argument because now Goodyear can't make it to his daughter's birthday party. Uh, Davis makes a comment that he fucked Miss Biggs, and Max really thinks that he did, and it's heartbreaking yeah. for him. Oh, yeah. He, is um, not, he does not take that well. Anyways, Angel ends up making like a graffiti of Miss Biggs that looks pretty spot on. Yeah, nailed it. <laughs> um, nailed it. And Goodyear notices it and is fucking... He, you know, he doesn't notice who does it. He asks who, do, who did it, and he just decides he's had enough. He's at a breaking point. His wife's yeah, pissed off at him. He's he had a rough this. day, and this is... Yeah. The last straw, basically. In the middle of a struggle, uh, Angel bites Goodyear, who in- ends up then throwing Angel into a pipe on the side of the wall and basically blunt force trauma. He's, yeah, he's dead, like dead, dead on impact. Immediately dead. Uh, and but I, I did not see that coming. This, yeah, this all. scene makes you so angry because uh, the head CEO and a bunch of other guards come in, force Butch and them on the ground. Butch is defiant the whole way, tells them no, tell them what happened, Goodyear, tell them mm-hmm. what happened. And. You even hear the comment from the head CEO telling Goodyear that he should call his union rep. Yeah. And it's fucking like, this probably happens, not necessarily in juvie, this probably happens in prison all the time. Oh, yeah. Where CEOs will murder fucking, even if it's an accidental, will murder fucking inmates and just get away with it because they're in jail. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, Goodyear finds out the angel was dead. Um, Dude, that, oh, my God. That was one of the hardest things for me to watch. The phone call. Like, yeah, he makes a phone call to the hospital. The hospital. Yeah. And, like, his, like, you hear, like, they're like, oh, like, I'm sorry to inform you, he was dead upon arrival. Yeah. Or, like, pronounced dead a while yeah, ago. Yeah, he died and early this morning or something Dude, like that. Goodyear's, like, that's He's why, broken. Like, his, oh, my God. Now, keep in mind, okay, if you don't know this movie you and you don't see the trailer, which we kind of advise you that you don't. Yeah. Uh, yeah, go, like, I went into this completely cold. I had no idea what it was about. Didn't watch the trailer. And holy fuck. And keep keep all this in mind because we're building to something. And oh, this, yeah. it's going to culminate here pretty soon. Um, so you remember Looney, the guy that got beat in the face with the, with the tennis paddle? Mm-hmm. Well, he is pissed off at Davis. Yeah. And uh, him and his buddy, the other Randall, uh, catch Davis downstairs doing laundry. And Looney decides to rape him. Flat out. I yeah, don't, I don't, my question this is why? Kinda, like it kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, and even the other, uh, yeah, like the other dude questioned. He's, he's like, like what, dude, are what are you doing? doing? And he's like, just hold him. Like, don't it's, worry about it. It's not a quick rape scene. It's no, it intense. is fucking it's, yeah. brutal. Uh, and they just leave him there, and Davis is fucking devastated. And yeah. Saul, even, even uh, Sal, ends up uh no, finding him. And it's even the look on Sal's face says it all. It's yeah, fucking like, done. The way, like the way they play out, like, because like we've seen stuff like this happen in movies before, mm-hmm. but for some reason, like it just takes it's they all, like all, I everything. Guess, I think it's because he's a kid. It's such a bigger hit, yeah. like in this movie, like emotionally, like it takes such a bigger toll because it like just the way they play it. Yeah, it's not fun to watch by any means. No. Uh, so the next few minutes we get different scenes of Davis just being like dead. He tries to approach Butch. And he's just like he's clumsy. He spills his tray. He's mm-hmm. just he doesn't know what to do. Uh, then we get a scene of Davis in the middle of the night. He wakes up out of his bunk and he tries to ask to get a phone call to call his mom. 
And he's pouring tears, and the guard's like, look, it's three in the morning. We'll let you call someone in the morning, but go back to bed. And this mm-hmm. is, like, one of the fo- only moments of, like, genuine, like, you know, the guard's caring. Yeah, yeah. But as also, the scene ends with, uh, you know, they have, like, an intercom in their bunk room, and Davis mm-hmm. keeps buzzing it, trying to hope someone will let him call his mom. And they eventually just turn it off. Yeah. Which, so it's like they care, but only to an extent. Yeah. It's the next morning, and Goodyear goes into the bunk room to try and wake people up. And all we see is an outside shot of the door of the room. Good, you're walking in. And then moments later, him running out and running down the hall. And it, yep. we get a shot that shows basically uh, Davis committed suicide in the middle of the night by cutting his wrist. Uh, this this moment happens and it's just pure silence. You know, we, yeah, get, this, there's... we get this pull out shot of Davis and we see he's kind of oh, kind of he's dead. And we see him kind of sitting still and then we cut out and we see like the bloodied blankets where his wrists are. Uh-huh. Cut to, again, still dead silent. Cut to the lunchroom, and every inmate is in there, and it's no one speaking, no one's moving. It's a hunger strike, flat yep. out. But the first shot we get of this lunchroom is Butch, and he has that Stanley Kubrick thousand yards. I love this. This shot. look gives me so, I don't know what it gives me goosebumps, but it also makes me like <laughs> hyped, but at the same time, scared. Like, it's, you know, so something is butch has this look in his eye and he's i don't think he's a man anymore he's just an animal it's just straight dead he's not he's breathing yeah he's like heavy like hate it's pure 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 hatred rage and what the camera is doing thing the camera is doing like uh a pull pull which is the opposite of like a push pull right the camera's dolling backwards but also zooming out yeah so we're seeing it's it's the, the it's the Hitchcock zoom. It's kind of like the reverse Hitchcock. Yeah, yeah. It's like we're seeing the background, uh, Butch, uh, Butch kind of melt with the background as we're mm-hmm. pulling out, and we're seeing how everyone else is dead I quiet. Lo- I love it's that so shot good. so it's much. It's my favorite shot in the whole movie. It's so good. It's almost like you could put the Kill Bill sirens over it, and it would fit oh, yeah. perfect. Uh, but yeah, again, dead silence. We're not hearing any music. We're not hearing anybody talk. It's nothing. So eerie. Uh, the head CEO comes in. He's walking down the aisles, just looking at everybody, and Frank out of all people just says the word dead and he's looking right at the ceo yep. and he is he also has that same kind of look of just like just rage pure rage and he just starts repeating he's like dead dead and it starts this chant it's slowly building chant everyone in the room starts doing it dead yep. dead and of course they're talking about davis and they're like oh, yeah. you know someone literally has fucking died because of you guys or just in general, that's their mentality. They're thinking it's the CEO's fault. Yeah, it's or Which, I mean, all the guards. It kind of is. Kind of is. Yeah. And it's again, it's just pure. This room just starts getting electric. It's b- pounding on the table. The trays bouncing. The hands hitting the table. The feet stomping. Everyone is just fucking chanting, "Dead, dead, dead!" As hard as they can. And as this is happening, Butch, dead silent, just staring. And who's he staring at? He's staring at Looney, and Looney yep. is trying as hard as he can to avoid eye contact. Yeah, and, it's oh not working. I mean, I can't blame him. If someone looked at me the way Bush, the way looked. Bush was, I would... <laughs> it's terrifying. Oh, my God. By far, the best scene in the movie is this scene, I just would be because like of this build-up. Bullets. We're doing the pull-pull on on butch as we're intercutting with the push pull mm-hmm. on looney so we're seeing exactly butch's eye his yep. his line of sight go right into looney and finally as this chant is building and building and it's reached its peak butch is the one who stands out of his seat grabs his chair and throws it into a wall and that ignites a fucking fury this shit plays goes crazy this place lights up this is the whole if nothing else, this watch this scene from the movie. Even yeah, if you get like, no, if you get no context from what happens in this movie, but this scene, the scene is still works. Oh no, I agree completely. Like, yeah, this scene is just insane. It's, it's so you know powerful. What, you know what it reminds me of? What's at up? least for, at, not in so much on an emotional level, but just as how much shit is just like popping off. The church scene in Kingsman. Yeah. If you take the music out of the church scene in Kingsman and like the style of it yeah. kind of and just show the raw what's happening. That's that's exactly or, what I thought of. Or, when I or the uh, the fight scene in Old Boy in the hallway. Yeah. But like times like five. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's so literally I, every 
I don't know how of, they filmed it. I don't know how they oh, filmed. I, damn it! I was really hoping you were gonna give me some no info just, on that. It's That's just a wide shot, and people are throwing chairs, breaking glass, hitting one another, and they're connecting things like. Things are happening, in the, and it's yeah, a like, crowd. It does not look like... They don't, like, cut away nope. right before they hit someone. No, like, you see the fucking follow and through. It's, it's like a 10-minute long sequence. It is so long. It's it's a flat-out riot. it's just riot. pure fucking chaos. The, the, before it starts, though, like I want to go back real quick, but this scene... The, the shot of Butch again. I, I can't talk enough about it. This, He's got this labored breathing. He's not blinking. He's got that thousand yard stare right into Looney. And my question is, how far, what is the limit? How far do you push someone, a man, to get to this level? Because this is not revenge or anything, I don't think. This is just pure animal instinct. Like, yeah, like he's just been through too much at this point. I I cannot even imagine. Be, I've been angry. I've been so angry before that I've wanted to act like this. But I'm, I don't think I've ever reached. I've never that reached the level. point where I did something like this, though. And, and or not even had like I can tell you everything he's thinking just by looking at him. And I don't think I've ever felt that no, level no, completely. God. But anyways, God. This riot breaks out, and it's not. It's not even between the inmates. Really, it's between the inmates and the guards. They're beating the coach. They're beating Goodyear. They're beating everyone. They're literally taking out every guard. Mm -hmm. But out of all that, Butch makes a straight beeline right to Lee. Yeah, he does. Beats the ever loving fuck out of this guy. All right. You remember in Dark Knight Rises when, like, Bane and Batman see each other from across the way and Mm -hmm. Bane just walks through, like, Mm -hmm. beating motherfuckers? That Butch is Bane Mm -hmm. in this right now. Like, he's like, Fucking other people up, but he's not breaking eye contact with yeah, me. Like, yeah, he's like, he's I'm making, fucking coming for yeah, you. Like, and you thought the beating with Banks was bad. This is like that in the middle of a riot. <laughs> yes, on and it, cocaine. It, just, it keeps building because not only does the riot break out, the guards are being beat. They bring in the riot gear and they start throwing tear gas. And the inmates are fucking breaking glass and throwing tables and kicking the riot shields in. And like, they're even making effort. They're pushing the riot. Oh uh, yeah, squad like, out of the lunchroom. Yeah, like they're overpowering the fucking riot. Yeah, the, uh, the the uh, the uh, coach, the black uh, guard. Yeah, yeah, is trying to confront one of. I think it might be uh, Frank or Harold. Is like, what are you doing? Like in the middle of the riot, just screaming at him. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. And the Puerto Rican guy guy comes out of nowhere with a flying fist and knocks the dude out yeah. cold. <laughs> it's like nonstop fucking carnage. It does not like. It keeps going. You yeah, think it's it going to settle down, and it never does. Um, out of all this, though, Max finds Butch in the crowd and tells him, we got to get out of here. We've got to escape. Mm-hmm. And they go through the kitchen, and Max shows him how to get out. But Max decides to stay. Why does Max stay? I couldn't tell you. I don't have a reason. I was very curious about that. But Max decides to stay. Butch... Uh, finds a fire extinguisher, bust open a door. Like, is he, like, trying to, like, I don't know, buy Butch time or something? I, I guess. I, don't, I, really I guess maybe know. he respects Butch enough that he doesn't want to go with him. He just wants to right. buy him time. Uh, Butch takes a fire extinguisher. He's busting open this dead bolted door and mm-hmm. gets out. He kicks it out, and he's outside. And it's crazy, because, like, he gets outside, and we just see him. We don't cut to, like, uh, another shot of there. It's just nope. on him. And he's just, he's literally just sitting there. He's just taking in the fresh air and it's yeah. quiet. It's calm. We hear birds chirping. Like after all the shit that just happened, like you just have, we this don't like hear serene, any of it. You just have this serene moment mm-hmm. of him just like breathing. We don't hear any of the riot inside. It's all, it's calm. It's peaceful. And he just sits there for a moment. And then this is, this ending, God. it makes me sick to my <laughs> stomach. Uh, he's standing there in the yard. He is, you know, enjoying the fresh air. And all of a sudden, I think maybe like three or four riot uh, guards bust out of the door. And one of them immediately breaks his leg with the baton. Like, sideswipes him. it is a brutal. It's fucking heavy. Brutal hit. They break his leg. And it takes three guards, as he's kicking and screaming, to drag him back inside the jail. While they're, like, beating the fuck out of him. They're beating him with the baton. They're dragging him. His leg's broken. He's screaming and kicking and spitting. And like, the just last like blood curling screams yeah. too. Like, the la- the oh, the last shot of the movie is the most sickening because we get this shot uh, of the door and we're slowly pushing in 
as we're hearing, like as it's like, echoing, yeah, you can still hear him like screaming. You hear as him he's being dragged down. You the hear hall. him kicking and screaming. And it's echoing and it's getting softer and softer. The echoes as it's getting further inside, and we're pushing into this door. And all of a sudden, it just goes dead quiet, and we're just pushing in on this door. And then finally, one of the riot guards pulls the door and slams it shut. Cut to black silence. Credits. That's it. Fucking ends. that ending is. Oh my god! Like, I want to say heavier ending than Terminator Three. The yeah, whole this, fucking this, world in right, Terminator as Three. Far this as far as like bleak endings, this is it. This is <laughs> the of how what episode are we on? This five. Is five. Is this heavier no, than this Requiem? The, I, I honestly, I this, think so. Yeah. I don't know why, because it's one person. It's not like it's life ending, but <laughs> it's just so the way it's filmed. It's you you want to puke when it's done. It's not, oh man, if you got a light heart, I'm sorry you had to watch that, but oh, now you know why we, I said we need to do this yeah, movie. Yeah, I, again, I went into this movie knowing nothing. I assumed it, I mean, it, I obviously went in knowing it had a downer ending of some sort, or else you wouldn't have suggested it, mm-hmm. but I can honestly say I did not expect that. God, dude. Like, dude, that whole, like, just the last 15 minutes of the movie everything from like like we have those happy moments like you know butch would like have an angel in the headlock Mm -hmm. and then just everything after that is just like yeah it's a heavy going to rip your heart and like not not just rip your heart out and stomp on it like i'm gonna rip your heart out torture it for a little bit (laughs) yeah and then not give it back to you. <laughs> and yeah, like and hand it back to you in a doggy bag. Yeah. It's heavy. And then dude. take it back and stomp on it. Again. Yeah. It's it's over a heavy and movie. Over dude. And over and over. Do you think this is a heavier and movie? Over and over and over. Do you think this is a heavier movie than Requiem? Mm, I kind of do. You might have a point. <laughs> I think this might be our heaviest episode yet. Our heaviest movie. Yeah, dude, this. If again, you haven't seen it, please go watch again, it. I mean, if you haven't seen it, you should not have, have listened to have this. Listened to this <laughs> at all. But I, yeah. holy fuck, it's a good one. It's a definitely a good one. It's too much. So I only have two notes of trivia here. Um, the director uh, cast a lot of actual inmates inmates in this movie, which I made me. That's why it feels so authentic. But uh, apparently, a lot of them are still back incarceration. Uh, they're, they haven't left. They're still in that uh, that juvie. And uh, the, this film is actually a remake. Uh, I haven't seen the original, but it's a remake of a 79 British film called Scum. Uh, I haven't seen it, though. I kind of want to. Me neither. I don't know if it can live up to that, though, man. That was... God. All right, so that's the movie. <laughs> like, that's it. It ends that bleakly. And we have our work cut out for us. So what is the silver lining of Dog Pound? <sighs> Uh, do you want me to go first since I normally let you go first? Please. Because, again, it's I, hard. I just saw this movie, so I'm still trying to process it. <laughs> like, as like I've been trying to process this movie as we talked about it. Mm-hmm. It's rough, dude. And it's rough. I think I've seen this movie maybe five times. And the first time I saw it, I immediately put it right back on. Because it was on Netflix, yeah. so I immediately turned it right back on. And Yeah, it's one of, like... As rough as it is, like on you emotionally, I want to watch this again, like tonight. Yeah, it's 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 kind of like that. I've only had a few movies have that impact on me. Kind of like Buried. After it was done, I immediately wanted to watch it again, like because I was just so like, oh, I was just so like, I don't know what. I was dead at the end of it. And I was like, I gotta watch it again for some reason. I gotta keep torturing myself. Um, but my my silver lining. And it's all about perspective, really. I mean, the movie kind of sets this up from the beginning, but I think I'm kind of glad Butch doesn't escape because I think Butch stood up for what was right in the Mm -hmm. end. You know, it's a violent method. It's not, you know, the Martin Luther King method. It's more of the Malcolm X method. But uh, I I agree with that, with that mentality where you can't, the, the the reason this is set in a juvie, like the, the because this is set in like a juvie hall, is a hundred percent backing my theory that you can't just like slap people on the wrist or you know throw them in a jail cell and expect things to change. Right. You have I, at least in this sense, I think 
He had the proper response to Banks. He had the proper response to Shadow. And he had the proper response to Looney. I mean, and the whole riot. I don't think he's necessarily the... the uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Basically, he's the one in, in who was in charge of the riot. Right, right. He's not the person who uh, cultivated it. But his energy fed the room, obviously. Oh, yeah. Like, like him and Frank's energy fed, fed the room. God, just that and shot of him is so good. It's such a good... It's my. It's one of my top ten favorite shots of any movie. Uh, yeah, I think it's up there for me now after seeing it finally. I, I, I think it's just the actor, dude. I think... I think Adam Butcher just like his, I don't know. He breathes so much of that. And he's, Wait, the guy it, playing Butcher's last name last is Butcher? Last name is Butcher. That's awesome. He's got these like beautiful baby blue eyes, and but you, there's just pure fire behind yeah. him. Yeah. I don't know how you get into that. I've never been that angry, I don't think. I really don't I want to get that, that angry. angry once just to see what happens. Just to film it. Just to see curious. what the response looks like. Um, I got to know what that's like. Yeah, but um, that's my silver lining. I just, I think he did what was right. Uh, I think him going back into the jail is kind of a good thing. I think he's he's gonna the be fuck it is. Well, I listen. <laughs> I I think he's he's the fucking he's not the hero they need. He's the hero or the hero they deserve. He's the hero they need. Oh my god, he set that jail <laughs> straight. He got rid of the bad seeds. Well, and see, that's kind of, that kind of the closest thing I have to a silver lining at this. He's point. like Rorschach. <laughs> oh shit! Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> he's the, um, this is the prequel to, to Watchmen. <laughs> Fuck it, that's my silver lining. <laughs> Butch's Rorschach. Go. No, oh, like, the, the closest thing I have to a silver lining right now is that they all stood up like against the fucking shitty Similar to what fucking mine was, yeah. system. Yeah. Like it's kind of like uh I don't remember the name of the There's not a lot you can there's a very thin silver lining to pull from mm-hmm. in this movie but it's more of a silver lining than it was a gray lining with T3, yeah but yeah there's i can't remember the name of it there was an incident uh at a jail uh it's it's referenced in dog day afternoon i can't remember but where like the prisoners revolted against the ceos because of how badly they were treated oh um you know what I'm talking about because he makes he keeps shouting it. I know the crowd. exactly what you're talking about. But that there, so that, there's there's an instance of this happening in real life. So yeah, yeah. I think it's important. This is obviously an important subject, and I think it is important that that Butch stays in jail. At least I don't know, man. It's it, it's just, it's a thin lining, but I think it's I think it's a valid one. Paper thin. I still think it's a valid silver lining. Okay, so after all of that, we got to come back up. Uh, what do you what what movie are you watching to bring yourself back from this? I was torn between two. Okay, because again, we try to relate them to the themes uh, of the of the the movie we watched. And now that we mentioned Watchmen, that's not a bad one. But also, Watchmen's also also kind of a downer movie. Yeah, no, Watchmen. So here's t- that's kind of a bleak ending i'll tell you what you tell me yours and i'll tell you mine because i'm torn between two. Oh, sir what do you got 1999 life starring eddie <laughs> murphy and martin lawrence <laughs> for some reason i thought you were going to say let's go to jail or was it Damn with, it. <laughs> with will arnett and uh jack shepherd uh <laughs> Damn it. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Missed up. I thought that's what you were going to say. Have you seen Life? I've seen Life. Life is amazing. It's a good movie. That movie is so good. Um, It was on just like a week ago. <laughs> I'm torn between two, but I think I'm going to go with the, with the better of the two. I think I'm going to say Shawshank. Uh, also about a guy in prison who gets the sh- shit kicked out of him, but in the end yeah. he comes out. Literally, he comes out cleaner on the other side. <laughs> Quite literally. Yeah. Uh, my my other one that I was gonna suggest, but it's not my official suggestion. It was gonna be Bronson, but Bronson, you should just watch if you haven't. Yeah, if you have seen Bronson, watch yeah. it. Actually, now I think about it. Yeah, Bronson yeah, is I'm incredible. A, I'm gonna say Shawshank's my official recommendation. So we got Shawshank, and we got Life, two mm-hmm. very different movies. <laughs> All right, clue for next week's episode. All right, um, how should we phrase this? <laughs> Tinder is a dark place. <laughs> Very dark. Oh man! All right. Uh, thank you for listening, everybody. Uh, please, if uh, if you're on iTunes right now, please subscribe and rate. Leave us feedback. Uh, like our Facebook page, Silver Linings Playlist. Just do a search and you'll find us. 
Uh, and give us suggestions if you have one for a movie with a downer ending or a sad ending, a movie you want us to review. Uh, we got a pretty good lineup schedule, but we're always willing to make changes. Yeah, I love hearing the suggestions. So, and it's funny because a lot awesome. of the suggestions people give us are ones we already have planned to do. <laughs> True. Occasionally, uh, we'll put a little spin on the suggestion. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So, Mally, do you have any last words before we sign off for this week? Same as always. Excelsior. Excelsior.